In this video, we're going to look at this circuit, and I took the LED out right now, but we're using a 5 volt power supply. What we want is a 3.3 volt output. We're going to look at this closer. Uh, coming up, I'll do a step by step build of this. Don't worry about this too much right now, unless uh, this is pretty easy to read for you. So, in any case, we want to set 3.3 uh, volts. We can use a Zener diode to do that. That's pretty commonly known. These uh, low value Zener diodes, they tend to fluctuate with their voltage though based on how much current is flowing through them. So we would like to have a certain amount of current flow through them regardless of what uh, the load is doing. So we can use an op amp. This is a single supply. It's 5 volts at the red rail, 0 volts ground at the uh, blue rail. And so we can use the CA3130 and I think that's pronounced BIMOS. Uh, that's a op amp that can work with a single power supply. So in any case, the LED is not there right now but the power is on. We'll get the multimeter, make sure the red probe is in the voltage spot and it's higher than the maximum voltage we will measure which is 5 volts. And turn it on. So we have at our non-inverting input, that's what we set our voltage. I'll just come to where the resistor is and there you can see it's uh, 3.29 so about spot on 3.3 volts of the Zener diode. Now we come to the output here. The resistor is not connected to anything and we have 3.29 volts. Exactly the same. And we'll add an LED to change the load. So there really was no load that resistor wasn't going into anything. Now it goes to the long lead, the anode of the LED. Short lead, the cathode goes to ground, of course. That's why it's lit up. If we put it in backwards, it would not be lit up right now. It would be blocking all the voltage and current. But there you can see, it's holding the voltage pretty much steady, even though we changed the uh, load quite significantly, because we went from uh, zero amps or milliamps, whatever, of uh, current, basically, to probably about uh, maybe 10 milliamps. So to begin with, we cleared out the board. We're gonna look at the basic schematic diagram that you will come across a lot when you study the op amp unity gain buffer or uh, op amp unity gain amplifier circuit. Uh, same thing right there. So the uh, inverting pin right there is connected directly to the output sometimes usually actually I see the inverting pin down at the bottom and the non-inverting pin at top when I see schematics for this it doesn't matter some people will put the inverting on top and the non-inverting on bottom some people will put the non-inverting on top and the inverting on bottom so don't get used to the top or bottom being either the non-inverting pin or the inverting pin. That's one warning. So, in any case, this is the basic schematic. You got the inverting pin connected directly to the output right here. And what that does, what unity gain stands for, is that the uh, voltage coming in will be the same voltage that comes out right there. It's unity, it is the same gain. So it's a gain of one. And now we come to the pin layout for the CA3130 op amp. You don't have to memorize the uh, BIMOS. It's, uh, the part number is CA3130, which we have here. You can see a little dot there. That's this divot. There's also the divot in the middle. You can see them both there. Now, of course, we have to power this, both for what's going on internally and also to power the output. And so pin number seven right here is connected to the positive rail. And then pin number four, so it's got V negative on there, but since we're using a single power supply, that uh, just is ground right there, our zero volt reference point. Same thing, it's the negative side of the circuit. This op amp, according to the data sheet, I always review data sheets to make sure I didn't make a mistake, uh, but uh, according to the data sheet, it can go from five volts to 16 volts, so that's with the single supply which is really all I have. I have some ways to get a split supply, but for actual power supplies, I only have the single supply. So split power supply, that means 2.5 volts above zero volts, 
and 2.5 volts below 0 volts. So really the same as 5 volts except for you have a point in the power supply where it's in the middle and you can either go more positive or negative. And then again you can go up to 16 volts with the single supply and then with a split supply you can go up to 8 volts and down to 8 volts. So 16 volts a range. And the maximum, the absolute maximum output according to the data sheet is 45 milliamps. Typical is uh, 20 or 22 milliamps, somewhere in that range. So in any case, we have that taken care of. Now, let's uh, go down to the schematic and the inverting pin goes directly to the output. So as we can see here, the inverting pin is pin 2. If you're new to these uh, dual inline package integrated circuits, you start at the top left, which is the divot there, or you have that divot there, you just work to the left, and you work your way down in the numbering system. So one, two, three, four. This is the bottom of the pin. If the pin was longer, you would keep counting down. But once you get to the bottom of the pin, then you jump over and work your way up. So five, six, seven, eight. So pin number two goes directly, the inverting pin goes directly to the output. Now you can't say the minus pin the plus pin that doesn't sound as clear when you're explaining circuits when you say plus pin minus pin the uh, non-inverting pin makes more sense when you're not looking at uh, these diagrams and stuff so I generally try to say non-inverting and inverting pin but in any case I have this jumper I just took a uh, piece of wire stripped off the ends and uh, bent it like that you could also take one of the longer jumpers that are preformed and I uh, just bend it to to make that connection or you can use some jumpers to go around what, however you want to do it there's no set way to wire this up whatever you like and works best for you so that's it we got the inverting pin going to the output so to set the voltage now in this case we could use a voltage divider just uh, split up the resistance so that it breaks up the 5 volts to uh, whatever voltage you want out there. I think though 3.5 volts is the max this will output with this setup so from the little bit of testing that I've done. So in any case we want a 3.3 volt a lot of times you'll have a 5 volt power supply and there's a lot of electronics that works on 3.3 volts and uh, so I think the data sheet even mentions that's one of the uses for this. So Let's, uh, let's do the resistor first. This resistor, 330 ohms, seems to set the best amount of uh, current for the Zener diode. So there's one thing to be aware of. So I got it from the uh, positive rail there to uh, here. I'm leaving a gap for the Zener diode. So one thing to be aware of, all this pin does, the non-inverting pin, it's an input, non-inverting input I should say, it measures the voltage at this point it doesn't let current flow through it. The amount of current that does leak through is hardly anything. So it's practically zero. So we just say it doesn't let any current through it at all. But it does monitor the voltage here. And so the uh, Zener diode will uh, start conducting about 3.3 volts based on how much current actually goes through it. And I find the 330 ohm resistor with 5 volts gets it pretty much spot on 3.3 volts. So we'll look at a couple other resistor values. There we go. But uh, for now we're going to put the 3.3 volt Zener diode there. And uh, remember Zener diodes, they conduct well reversed bias at their Zener voltage. So if I forward bias it, so we have the cathode now to the resistor, anode to the negative supply. If we flip this around, it's going to conduct at about 0.7 volts, just like a rectifier diode. We don't want that. We want it reverse bias. So the Zener voltage as well it's reverse bias. So the cathode goes towards the positive side of the power supply, anode towards the negative side of the power supply. It's safe to pass current through them while they're reverse bias. Most diodes, it's not safe to pass current while they're reverse bias. So that's just uh, something to mention. Uh, that's basic electronics so when you're learning about the Zener diode so very important thing so for a load as we showed before we could measure this without a load 
but I like LEDs because they light up when they have current going through. So we're going to take a 220 ohm resistor, plenty of resistance to protect an LED from 3.3 volts. Even, uh, even I think 100 volts would uh, be just fine. I didn't uh, actually calculate how much, but uh, in any case, we have the resistor there at the output. Now it's going to come to the LED, the long lead now, the anode. Remember I said diodes, they uh, usually conduct with the anode towards the positive side, cathode towards the negative supply side. The uh, Zener diode or avalanche diode are the only exceptions I know. Uh, there, there may be other rare types of diodes too, but the Zener diode, maybe it'll be called an avalanche diode too. Basically the same thing is uh, really the only diode you'll have conduct well reverse bias. Otherwise, usually you intend to block it. But in any case, that's it for wiring that up. And of course, you have to get out the multimeter to get the exact voltages. And so now I got the uh, multimeter. We will zoom back a little bit, shift the light, turn the power on. We're set for 20 volts or less. And we can ground the black probe anywhere over here. There we go. We see 3.29 volts. We saw that earlier. Or we could measure it at that point, uh, 3.29. So I didn't mention this, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I did mention powering it, so never mind. I already mentioned the uh, power pin. So in any case, we had uh, 3.9 there. So what we're going to do now is turn the power off and I'm going to put a larger value resistor right here. So this will lower the current going through the Zener diode. Let's turn the uh, power on there. So it still works just fine. And uh, we'll come here. We'll see we only have 2.93 volts here. So we lost about 0.4 volts, which may be too much for whatever you plan to power at 3.3 volts. But there you can see 2.92 right there. And uh, just a tad bit higher there. But uh, let's take out the LED. And uh, now we should have the exact same voltage. So I mean it changes just a tiny bit based on load right there. Okay, 2.2. So in any case, we'll put this back now. Unfortunately, if I put a, I uh, should turn the power off. 220 ohm resistor. Now it should be, there's uh, more current flowing through, so the Zener dial is probably going to block a little bit more voltage. Right there you see 3.42, so about 0.12 volts higher than it was with uh, the 330 ohm resistor. And uh, the output, I think we're actually about as much as the output can uh, output right now with this, this setup about 3.34 uh, volts so let's check it there alright 3.41 but I, I think that's about the, the maximum I'd have to do some more testing so now let's uh, yank the Zener diode out as I mentioned before we use them reverse bias let's forward let's uh, zoom in let's forward bias this LED at the input there. So the ground rail is one spot lower. I'll put the short lead, the cathode, down to that uh, rail that goes to the V negative, which goes to ground. And then the uh, anode I'll put to the non inverting input. We'll go back. And so this is going to block somewhere around 2 volts. And It'll probably be 2 volts with the 220 ohm resistor. Let's look at what it is. You notice this LED is not as bright. But uh, 1.87 volts. And we got 1.84 volts. So it's about the same. Let's uh, yank out the 330 ohm resistor and put the. Where's the other? Oh, I thought that was a 330 ohm resistor. Let's do the 1 kilo ohm resistor. I think that was a 220. So there, it's a little bit lower, 1.78. But uh, you can see that it's holding about the same. 220. 
I'm not sure if that's what we had in there earlier or not. These are kind of thin pins, so it's a little lower. So a little easy. 1.88. Yeah. Alright, so I thought I had the 330 earlier, but it was a 220. So, the amount of current going through the LED makes a difference. 1.84. But, uh, with the LED, it's not as drastic, I don't think, of a change. So, in any case, that's uh, really it for the uh, this particular op amp. It's hard to find op amps that will work with a single power supply. But there's so many power uh, single power supplies out there that I'm going to try to find as many circuits I can put together using a single power supply and using op amps that can use a single power supply. So unfortunately, I got this from this kit, which uh, I got it on Amazon, and it's not available right now. And I don't see it anywhere else. I don't know that this kit has a name to it. But uh, I really like this kit. It has a wide assortment of op amps. And I think you saved a little bit of money buying them all from there. But it's not available anymore. But uh, I'm going to try to find another op amp kit. And uh, hopefully be able to use that in the future. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.